Would you lift up your hands with all of your heart? Would you lift up your voice and would you give it to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Come on, do that together. Do that together. Do that together in one mind, in one place. For where two or three come together in the name of Jesus, there he is in the midst of them. Oh! Come on, just let it flow. Just for another moment, just let it flow. That's not the flow of music. That's the flow of worship. That's the flow of praise. And God inhabits the praises of his people. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. If you need liberty right now, you ought to praise him. You ought to let out a Holy Ghost praise. Hallelujah. Uh. Somebody say, I don't deserve it. No matter who you are, no matter how spiritual you are, you might have been turning flips like John in his mama's womb, come out speaking in tongues, but nobody deserves it. That's why David, who was a man after God's own heart, said, who am I that you would be mindful, that your thoughts would be full of me? Can you just take a moment and reflect on that? promise and that truth that God who inhabits the entire universe and then some his attention is on this place right now I kind of just wonder if we truly tapped into that truth and that belief how would we act in the name of Jesus everybody say healing today is a day of healing the Lord gave me a word that today is a day of healing First of all, there's physical needs that will be healed today. And secondly, there are spiritual and emotional and psychological needs that will be healed today. Everybody say today. Come on, say today. In the name of Jesus. I want to read just a quick passage of scripture from Matthew chapter 8, a familiar passage of scripture. I will not preach this morning. I will speak the word of faith through faith in God, not my voice or my ability or my strength. I have very little strength now, but I want to show you this in the scripture that it does not matter your strength or your talent or your ability. Starting in verse 6, Matthew 8. The centurion said to the Lord, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, Watch this. Grievously tormented. People here have been grieve, grievously tormented that are going to walk home today completely healed and delivered. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. He didn't even know where he was, but he said, I will go and heal him. He knows where you are and he will come today. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy, just like we are not worthy, that you would come under my roof, but speak the word only. Would you say that with me? But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant... Do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard it, be, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. I've never seen faith like this before, not even in Israel. Verse 13, And Jesus saith unto the centurion, Go your way. And as thou hast believed, everybody say believe. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self-same hour. There are about to be healings in this hour. There are about to be chains of sickness and disease, infirmity, handicaps, 
ailments that are grievously tormenting you that will be healed and delivered this hour. I want this church, everybody right now to say today is a day of healing. Would you just lift up your hands if you believe that? And would you open your heart right now? For God cannot force himself on you. Open your heart and let the Lord know whatever you want to do, I will receive it today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You've come many years, many services for healing. I've got news for you that this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice. We shall be glad for the Lord is a healer. Woo. You may be seated for just a moment. You can tell by my voice is just a little under the weather and that's fine. I... I, and I don't tell this publicly because the, the Bible instructs us not to. However, this is for the glory of God and not for me. And I want to let this church know what's happened in the last several days to confirm to you and your faith that this will be a day of healing. From the last Sunday I was here until today, right now, I've been praying and I've been fasting all week. And, and I've been praying and fasting for this church that we would see a move of God. And I felt the Lord that I, I, I felt direction that I would preach something on the laying on of hands. And we would see a demonstration of his power. And, and I flew all day yesterday and made it to Atlanta and got to my hotel. And about 11 o'clock at night, I was hit with what feels like the flu and uh, if it's not the FLU flu, it might be the PHLU flu. I'm not sure which one it is, but that's what it felt like to me. And I know right now some of you think about, get your stuff, baby. We out of here. He ain't, he ain't giving us that disease. Well, you just hold on for a second because I, I didn't sleep but maybe an hour and a half last night. And I got up and I said, God, if you won't let me sleep with this congestion, I will walk the floors and I will pray until you release me, God. And I prayed for hours last night until the early hours of this morning until I just could not take another step and I got in bed and I couldn't sleep and I tossed and turned and I set my alarm and I ended up turning off the alarm and said man I'm sick I'm gonna sleep in a little bit and set and reset my alarm to 7 30 and and I didn't really sleep I woke up at about 6 30 and tossed and turned for another hour and I texted a friend of mine and and I let him know I said I just need your prayer I, I believe that that I've been stricken with a spirit of 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 sickness and I believe that it is an attack upon me and an attack upon this church. And some of you might not believe that, but there have been many instances where I've walked into hotel rooms. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I've walked into hotel rooms and been attacked of spirits left behind of other immoral people of this world. I was in Munich, Germany and headed there to preach revival. And I got into my hotel room and laid my suitcase down. And there in that hotel room, I felt a spirit that was in that room that was not of God. Others have felt that before where you've walked into a store or someone's home and you said there's something here that's just not right and I laid my suitcase down and went out to eat and came back and when I came back I could still feel that spirit lingering that that was not of God and I said well the only thing I know to do is get out my Bible this very Bible right here I got this word of God out and I began to read about the name of Jesus Christ and the very moment I got to the name of Jesus I just felt a and it wasn't a good it was a bad one I looked up and for the only time in my life I I saw a manifestation of a demonic presence at the foot of my bed and you know I told you big faith evangelist right here I I, I was afraid you think I probably got up and knocked him out no I was frozen with fear I was frozen with intimidation I had never seen or witnessed anything like this in my life and I, I, I didn't know what to do and all of a sudden as the flesh is weak but the spirit is willing the spirit of the Lord woke up inside of me and I stood up and I let that devil know I'm about to knock you out in the name of Jesus and that spirit was just taunting me shaking his head uh, kind of saying to me you won't have revival here in Munich and I found out later that they hadn't had revival there in over 20 years and he said I've been here longer than you you will not have revival and I just stood there and I said Lord I'm about to rebuke the devil and God stopped me and said no do not rebuke 
rebuke him. First repent. uh, For if there is anything uh, that is not of my holiness, uh, not of my righteousness, and not of my spirit uh, that is in you, on your heart, in your mind, on your hands, uh, and you go to rebuke that spirit, he will latch himself to that dirty thing in your heart. I began to search the Lord and I I said, God, if there's anything wicked inside of me that I don't know is there, get rid of it now. And it wasn't but a few moments of repentance uh, that I just kind of felt the gift of faith come on me. And I looked at that devil and didn't have to do anything but say the name of Jesus. Uh, Because when I repented, uh, I made myself right with God. Uh, That devil looked at me and ran out. Uh, And that next morning we had over 22 people receive receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repentance sets you right at the throne of God. You might be saying this morning, oh preacher, you don't know how far I am from God. I've been running for years, although I've come to church every Sunday. I've been running from God. I I don't have a prayer life anymore. In fact, I've picked up some old habits this year. and uh, You don't know how far away I am from God. You're right, I don't know. But I do know that you might be far, but you're not too far for a prayer of repentance. For when you get on your face and you simply say in the name of Jesus I turn from my sin and I turn to your face the Bible says that if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn repent from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sin I will heal I will heal I will heal I will You're not hearing me this morning. I'm not preaching a comic book. I'm preaching the word of God. He said, all you got to do is get on your face and just say, I'm sorry. I spoke to the Lord this morning when I was tossing and turning. and I said, God, I've reset my alarm for 730. I said, Lord, I speak a word of faith right now that when that alarm goes off, I won't hit the snooze. I'll get up, put my feet on the floor, and you will heal me and give me strength. And As you can tell, he didn't completely heal me, but I can tell you this. When I stood to my feet earlier throughout the night, I could barely make it to the restroom. But this time I stood to my feet and I walked right into the bathroom. And I got in the shower, and the moment I got in the shower, the Lord spoke to me. And said, tell them, if they will lay aside the weight and the sin that does so easily beset them, I will heal them instantaneously. Not everybody will be healed today because not everybody will respond to this word. But it is Hebrews 12 and 1 that says, Wherefore seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run the race with patience that is set before us. I, I was in the shower and the Lord spoke that to me and I said, God, what do I have to do I've been fasting all week and I've gotten stuff read off of my phone that that weren't sins. Uh, Facebook and Instagram were things, uh, games and whatever. And I said, those things weren't sin, but God, they were distractions. Uh, They had become weights on me, uh, keeping me from you. And I I got rid of those things, God. I've laid aside the weight this week. I've I've not been at the dinner table this week, Lord. I've given myself wholeheartedly to you, God. Why would I be inflicted with this sickness, God? What must I do now to be healed and I heard the voice of God speak to me as clear as you can hear me now he said just believe because when you repent and you get right with God you might be 55 years removed from the throne but the moment you open your eyes after a prayer of repentance you are standing right at the feet of Jesus Christ 
The late Oma Ellis, who was a Pentecostal minister, told a story similar to these that, that, that she had uh, been called by her friend Ruby and she said, Oma, get here now. You, you got to pray for my baby, 18-month-old baby. He's dying and you got to get here. And uh, Oma Ellis went to the house and before she uh, got to the door, she was met by uh, Ruby's husband and he ran out of that house and pointed his finger at that uh, Pentecostal preacher, Oma Ellis, and said, get out of here, uh, we don't want your kind here in this house. We don't need you, tongue talker, in this house. She reluctantly turned and went back home and got some prayer warriors and began to pray. And she said it wasn't but a few moments that a light shone in her room and spoke a direct word and said, Oma, go back to that house. You can pray for the baby now. She went back to that house. And she, when, when she was walking down the sidewalk to the house, she ran into the local doctor who said, Oma, I'm glad you're coming because the baby is dead. I've already called the undertaker and he's on his way to take the baby away. She was almost in disbelief thinking, no, but I just saw the Lord and he told me to go pray for the baby. And when she walked into the house, the husband of Ruby was standing there, but he wasn't as contentious anymore or confrontational this time. Uh, the death of his baby had softened him, his heart. And she walked up to him as a friend and, and she said, sir, I truly believe that God can raise the dead. She said, if you'll get on your knees right now and repent of all of your sins, God will raise your dead baby from the grave. He literally ran out of the living room into his bedroom and got on his face. She says that he screamed so loud in repentance that neighbors began to, began to come to check on them and make sure everything was all right. She said she let him repent for a moment. And when she felt a release, she simply walked up to the baby, laid her hand on top top of his head and the moment she said Jesus that baby's eyes opened up that husband ran into the living room and picked up his dead baby now alive and was filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost well that was in the 30s and 40s you want to hear something from the 2000s not far from here, I was preaching in South Carolina and I walked into a hotel room and the Lord spoke an audible voice to me and I'll never forget it as long as I live. Uh, the moment the door shut, he said uh, uh, the name of a pastor and said, this pastor is living in sin and he will die lost and never be saved again and go to hell uh, if he does not repent right now. And I got on my face and I began to pray and I said, Lord, I've really got to know if this was you. And after a couple hours, the Lord said, spoken again and he said his name and said call him now get a hold of him now I texted this pastor I said what are you doing he said leaving the church from a prayer meeting I said well go back in the church and get to the altar and call me when you get there he got to the altar and called me and I said what are you doing he said well I told you I'm leaving the church from a prayer meeting I said no what are you involved with What's going on in your life? The Lord just spoke to me and said, if you don't fall on your face and repent right now, you will die lost and go to hell because you're living in sin tonight. I could literally hear him hit the floor, phone falling out of his hand. He began to scream what seemed like at least 30 minutes and I finally got his attention and I said, speak to me. The Bible says to confess your faults one to another and I said, talk to me, friend, that I can pray for you that you might be healed. James 5, 16, confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. Repentance equals healing. And he, he told me, he said, well, for the last seven, eight, nine months, I've been, I've been provoked and tempted by an ungodly woman at my job. And she's tempted me to go home with her, to sleep with her. And he said, I have refused. I have rebuked. I have cursed. He said, I've been strong until today. He said, I got weak and I was vulnerable today. And I texted her and I said, ma'am, uh, tonight I will come to your home and sleep with you. And he said that when he sent the text, tears bit began to well up in his eyes and he said God if you are real if you are real would you speak to Chris Green and tell him to call me before I go through with this <sighs> 
that pastor got right with God in the next 12 months all by himself without any ministers or help. He saw over 150 people filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name. And watch this. I'm trying to hurry. Watch this. It, it wasn't but a little bit after that that he got a phone call from, from a lady in his church who said in the middle of the night, she said, you've got to come now to the hospital. My nephew is dying right now. You've got to come. And, and she said, my, my sister's pastor won't come because it's in the middle of the night and he's asleep. And I told my sister that I got a pastor that will come and pray. Uh, and he said, I'll be right there. And on his way to the hospital, the baby died. And he got to that hospital room where the baby was dead, just less than a, a few weeks old. And he said the family was standing around the bedside of this baby that had been diagnosed with Down syndrome and kidney failure and all sorts of problems. And, and the baby had died where the parents were sitting there and some of them uh, slain on the floor, just crying out in sorrow. And he said, the moment when I walked into that room I felt the gift of faith come on me and he said I just felt like jumping and shouting but I knew that wasn't the time or the place and he said so I told the family uh, I said let's hold hands and let's just pray for this baby uh, he said the doctor and the nurse walked in and said if you're going to pray we, we want to pray with you and he said they began to pray he said Chris all I said was Lord we welcome your presence in this place He said the moment he said those words, uh, he said there came a sound from that baby. Uh, they looked, but there was no response. Eyelids shut and no, no pulse, no breath. And he said, come on, hold hands again. And he said, Lord, <coughs> we welcome your presence into this place. He said, Chris, you might find this hard to believe. I said, no, no, no. What happened? He said, when I looked up, I could feel the rushing mighty wind of the Holy Ghost. He said, I could see the curtains on the window begin to move. He said, all of a sudden, you could feel it moving like a torrent around that room. He said, in just a few moments, that baby woke up from the dead with his eyes opened, began to talk or began to speak sounds. He said, the nurse started jumping up and down saying, oh my God, I've seen a miracle with my own eyes. They rushed that baby into the ICU uh, where they did scans and x-rays and all sorts of studies. Uh, the doctor came out and said the baby's perfect. Uh, there's no Down syndrome. Uh, there's no, there is no kidney failure. That same pastor texted me this morning just before I, I came to church today and he said I was praying this morning and God gave me a vision for you. He said wherever you are you're going to stand in the pulpit with an anointing on you. He said angels will surround you. He said I saw you speak the word of faith and many people were healed. He said there was a prophetic presence of the Lord that surrounded that church. It's not about me. It's all about us. We... I told pastor, I don't care who the vessel is, but God wants to heal somebody today. I can feel angels standing with us right now. I can feel the ministering spirits under the heirs of salvation. I feel his help in this place. The king is in this room even now. I told you I wasn't preaching a sermon, which means there ain't no altar call. I'm not giving you an altar call. I'm not giving you an invitation. I'm just simply going to say, if you need healing in your body, what is stopping you from reaching out and touching the hem of his garment? 
Well, we only got five that need healing today. That's all right. The five are going to get it. They're going to walk away with it today. There will be notable miracles in this place. I want everybody to stop praying right now. Stop praying right now. I want you to hear what the Lord spoke to me and gave me direction. Listen to me for just a second. Please, please know that I, I respect this place. I, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. The Lord said, tell no one to lay hands on anybody. Just speak the word. Just speak the word. I believe in the laying upon of hands. In fact, that was going to be my sermon this morning. I, I've got a sermon just for that. But the Lord said, no, not today. I'm going to show them that it's not by might or by power, but by the Spirit of God, saith the Lord. I'm telling you, it's not going to be by anybody's ability in this place, but it's going to be when we come like a child and say, Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Thou son of David, have mercy on me. This is what we're about to do. In just a second, when I release this place to do this, everybody in this room is going to pray. I mean a heartfelt prayer of repentance. You're going to pray for God to create in you a clean heart and put a clean spirit within you, create in you a clean spirit. This is what I truly feel in the Holy Ghost right now. Listen to me. As we begin to repent, the spirit of love and compassion will begin to move in this room. You said, oh, not the spirit of faith? No. All you need is faith the size of a mustard seed to move a mountain. You don't need more faith. The Bible says that faith worketh by love. When we begin to repent, I prophesy to you right now that when we begin to repent and you begin to speak in tongues in repentance, there's going to be notable miracles happen in the moment of repentance without anybody praying the prayer of faith over you. But then when the Lord releases me, there will be spoken the prayer of faith to heal the sick just like the Bible says. I will pray just like Peter said when he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. I will pray the prayer of faith. And the moment that we speak the name Jesus all across this room, there will be divine notable miracles of healing and deliverance right now. Before we pray, I want to ask you that if you've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost, You've never received God's spirit inside of you with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I ask you right now to come to this front and join us at this altar for God wants to fill you with his spirit today. If you've never been baptized in waters in the only saving name of Jesus and if you desire to go to heaven, Jesus said you must be born again of the water and of the spirit to see my kingdom. If you have never been baptized, whether in the water or in the name of Jesus, or you've never been filled with the gift of His Spirit, the gift of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking new sounds in other tongues, I want you to come as we begin to pray, and God is going to fill you with the Holy Ghost today. There will be many people healed in just a moment. What I want you to do is do whatever you feel to do, but listen to me, please. I urge you, let's not just pray a simple prayer saying, God, forgive me. Let's seriously in this new year, let's say, God, whatever I've got to do, lay aside the weight. It's not even a sin, but I'm going to get rid of things that, that have held me back and that have, that have weighted me down. I'm going to get rid of the wait and as you do God's going to begin to move I want you to begin to pray right now in whatever prayer position you feel to do if you feel to kneel if you feel to lay if you feel to stand if you feel whatever you feel to do I want you to lift up your voice with all of your might and in the name of Jesus begin to pray that sincere prayer of repentance
Come on, true repentance. True repentance. His grace is sufficient for me and his strength is made perfect in my weakness. He's not strong when you're strong. He is strong and made perfect in your, in your failure, in your disaster, in your weakness, in your disease in your mistakes, in your sins. Come on, right now. Come on, go ahead. Don't wait for me or any other prompting. Uh, go ahead from your heart, uh, with all of your heart, with all of your soul, uh, with all of your strength. Uh, let out that gut-wrenching prayer right now. I turn from my ways. I turn to your face. I give my, my soul to you. I give my faith to you. I give my life to you. I turn from my... Come on, this is the door. This is the gateway to your healing. Uh, come on, this is the gateway to your healing. Uh, somebody step through that door uh, with sacrificial repentance. Uh, somebody step through that door right now. That's it. Come on. The love of God is moving right now. Uh, the compassion of Jesus is moving right now. Uh, yeah, he's got compassion on you. Uh, he loves you. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave, uh, that he gave, that he gave, that he gave. Uh, love is moving right now. Compassion is moving right now. Uh, mercy is moving right now. Grace is moving right now. Come on. In the name of Jesus, you shall be healed. You shall walk away with your healing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, we can just let this go for just a moment. This is sincere right here. Uh, this is the flow of the Holy Ghost. This is a sovereign move of God. Uh, it's not that you're wrong with God. It's that you want to be right with God. It, it's that you need healing and power. You want to see a demonstration of his authority and anointing. Therefore, uh, you will do whatever it takes to see his power manifested in your life. I don't want anybody talking or distracting anybody in this room right now. There's, 
a sovereign move of God in this place. Don't, don't be that hindrance to the move of God. Don't be a distraction to the move of God. If, if you need to talk, you, you're dismissed right now. If you need to get on your phone, you're dismissed right now. People are searching for answers right now of healing uh, that have been diagnosed against their favor, their body. Uh, there are things right now that are taking place in this room. Uh, In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I think it's time we move into the prayer of faith right now. This is what I want to do. This is what I want us to do. I want everybody to put your hands down for just a moment. Would you put your hands down for just a moment, everybody? Would you just put your hands down for just a moment? This is what we're going to do as a sign of faith to God, to show God that we believe. First of all, I want to ask that during that repentance... Just listen for just a second, please. That during that repentance, I want you to inspect if you've had disease, if you had a growth, a headache, arthritis, something in your body, your feet or your legs. I, I want you to take just 30 seconds and inspect that problem, that disease or sickness or growth or pain right now. Would you just inspect yourself for just a second? If, if you just need to kind of touch in that place and look to see if it's gone or kind of touch your head, would you just take a moment? Don't look at me. Look at yourself for just a moment. Inspect yourself if you needed healing in your body during that repentance I, I, I just want to see that, that the Lord was sovereign and healed somebody in this place listen now as you have inspected if you felt instant relief or healing in your body if that thing is gone would you just raise one hand right now one hand just keep it up we just raise one hand there's a hand up over here there's one there's two three four five six seven eight at least nine nine maybe ten maybe more there's close to 10 people that said during that repentance that there was divine healing in their bodies. In just a moment, when I pray the prayer of faith, some of you may have never heard of this kind of prayer before, but in just a second, when I pray the prayer of faith, uh, there are going to be angels of the throne of God uh, that march through this sanctuary, uh, that touch you on your head, uh, that heal you instantaneously. Uh, and I want everybody's hands to be down when we pray. Uh, this is why, uh, because the very instant that God heals your body, uh, at that moment, uh, I want you to lift up your your hands uh, as a sign of rejoicing uh, that God has just taken that sickness from your body. Uh, you're not going to lift your hands uh, until God has healed you. Uh, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray the prayer of faith. Uh, and the very moment I shout Jesus, uh, I want this whole room to shout Jesus. Uh, and when you shout Jesus, uh, the Holy Ghost is going to fill your soul. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And as you begin to speak in tongues and other sounds and languages, uh, as God fills you with the Holy Ghost, uh, angels will touch your head and God will heal you instantaneously. At that moment, lift up your hands uh, to let God and to let the church know, I have been healed. If you're ready, just say yes. Come on, if you're ready, say yes. I bind every disease. I bind every sickness. I bind every pancreatic cancer. I bind any cancer. I bind arthritis. I bind diabetes. And by the authority of the word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus Christ, I command everyone to be healed right now. In the name of Jesus, shout it, 
speak in other tongues, receive ye the gift of the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the gift of the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, uh, angels are moving in this place. Uh, receive. There's hands going up. Uh, there's hands going up. Uh, there's hands going up. Uh, there's healing now. Uh, there's healing now. Uh, there's healing now. Come on. If you're getting healed, uh, lift up your hands and keep them up uh, all across this room. Uh, I command the gifts of healing to go. Uh, I release. Ah, I release the gift of faith now. I release the gifts of healing now. I release the gift of faith now. I release the gifts of healing now. No reason to stop. You might as well push. You might as well pray. happen if you're a few steps behind the Lord and the evangelist why don't you catch up right now in your spirit get thoroughly right with God cleanse your heart cleanse your hands ask God to forgive you and cleanse you of secret fault premeditated sins presumptuous sins that plan that you've had in your mind that you've been debating on why don't you get rid of it right now if you're a few steps behind the Lord, why don't you catch up with Him right now? God is a God of mercy, but He is a consuming fire. We want to be ready to walk with Him and be ready to respond to the Spirit of the Lord right now. That's it. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, receive it now. If you do have the gift of the Holy Ghost, begin to speak in tongues. Let it flow out of you. Amen. This is a moment of plugging into the Spirit. If you're wondering what God is doing right now and you wonder, well, maybe that evangelist is just trying to kind of get us to think a certain way. I want to remind you that in the Old Testament, the Lord said, I want you to sing the praise. I want you to send the praisers out in front. God doesn't always do the same thing the same way, but he does things in a way that brings us into a place of humility, a lack of pride and submission to the divine will of God. You see, they wanted to go in the battle with swords and spears and shields. But the Lord said, I'm going to let it be won by praise. The Lord does a lot of unorthodox things. Amen? He does a lot of unorthodox things. Because we want to do it our way through human reasoning and logic. And we think that God's way may be a little goofy or silly. But I want you to just understand this, that if you will open your heart to God and say, Lord, I just submit myself to you right now and to what you've just said to a man of God, to Brother Green, I want us to begin to praise the Lord. I want us to begin to believe that God's going to set 
ambushments, that he's going to go to our enemies. That enemy may be a sickness. It may be an attack from the devil. It may be a financial problem. But I want you to just by your praise, put it in the hands of the Lord right now. Amen. We're going to praise him a little while. We're going to thank him because the Lord is here to work right now. Amen. We're going to praise him together. We're going to sing. the Lord and thank him and praise him right now. The Bible said that the Lord sent his word and heal them. We know that the Lord can send His Word where He's not even there physically and the supernatural can be performed. Amen? Centurion said, right? I'm a man under authority. You just say go, go. Amen. So I I don't know. While we were just worshiping, I felt just to give us an opportunity to pray. You may know a person or a situation. That person is not here right now. But you want to pray and send the word of the Lord. I don't think we dispatch angels, but God does. And we'll leave that up to Him. But if you would like to pray with me now, maybe a person that is away from God, a person I was thinking while we were praying earlier about Brother Dwayne Lewis in Piedmont Hospital, and I prayed that the Lord would go there by His healing power and touch Brother Dwayne. But while we were praying, I just felt that verse. He sent His word and healed them. He can send His Word and save them. And after we pray, we'll worship and you can go or come. If you need to be baptized in Jesus' name today, we want to baptize you today. But I want to encourage you, as I said, maybe you're a few steps behind. This past week, maybe you needed to fast and you couldn't. Something came up or you forgot and you didn't fast. It's okay for this next week to be a week of consecration again Because I pray that God would restore apostolic principles, practice, and power to His church and this church. Amen? I'm passionate that we would be a book of Acts church. Let's pray that the Lord would send 
his word, whatever the need is, we're going to say he sent his word and healed them, whatever that word of healing is. Would you pray with me right now? Well, first of all, how many of you have a situation that you feel to pray that way? I just want to see. You've got, you've got a person. I know we've got backslidden loved ones and all kinds of things. Let's pray. And I want you to visualize... I want you to visualize faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when I was a teenager, I learned to pray and just see God doing it, right? So I want you to see God doing it now. I want you to see maybe visibly for you would be that Jesus just walked in the room, just physically, and that's just an expression of your faith that the Lord is going to send His Word. Let's pray that right now. Lord, I have no idea what you have in your great mind But I know, Lord, that you want to demonstrate your power through your people. And we believe that you are omnipresent, that you are everywhere. And we believe, Lord, that you manifest yourself through healings and power and demonstration of the Spirit. We know, Lord, that there have been times when you troubled a king in a dream. We know you've appeared unto people through an angelic form. We know that you've spoken to people in visions. We know, O oh Lord, that you have multiple ways of demonstrating your glory. We let you be God, but we pray in faith today that you would send your word, send your presence, send your angel to a backslider, send your presence to a sick person, send your presence to someone who is bound in sin. Send your word and heal them, I pray, for your glory, for your glory, and for their salvation, for their healing, for their need of you, oh God. Just pray on a little bit now. In Jesus' name. Pray another prayer if you feel that right now. I want to give time for us to exercise our faith in the power of God. praise him for the victory praise him because we believe in the power of God we believe in his word and the demonstration of his power in the name of Jesus right now Lord I pray right operate in the Holy Ghost flow in this right now Feel the strength. 
Bless you. That's it. Receive this from the Lord. That's right. Receive this from the Lord right now. That's right, that's right, that's right. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Get in step with the Spirit. That's what the Lord is saying to His church. Hallelujah. 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 That's right. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If this seems like a foreign language to you, come into the kingdom of God. Tap into the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit and know that we serve a mighty God who demonstrates Himself today, amen, by the power of His Spirit. And leave this place in that power. <clears throat> when there is a message in tongues... Most of us know we just hush ourselves and listen. If the person in the pulpit feels that it may be the inappropriate time or it's not the Lord, we'll just trust that they know and they might encourage everyone to worship the Lord and none of us are perfect, but we have never tried to humiliate or embarrass anyone. But the Lord was speaking and we want to let the Spirit be subject to us that we would bring ourselves in a place of spiritual attention. I also want to say in an instructive way, but sometimes when things come to the surface, sin comes to the surface, we think that's a bad sign. But in the early church, it was a good sign that the heat of the Holy Ghost had been turned up and God was cleansing His church and giving people an opportunity to repent so they would not go to hell. So the Lord gives us an opportunity in moments like this. I believe that's what Romans 8, 26 and 27, the Spirit knows our weakness and He works in us to cleanse stuff out of us that we don't even know. That's why the psalmist said, cleanse me from secret faults. But then there are those willful or presumptuous sins. And when we are stiff-necked, when we will not respond to the Spirit to cleanse stuff out of our hearts, the Lord is good enough to sometimes to let us get caught. David got caught in his sin. But he repented thoroughly 
and died right with God. It is more important for you to go to heaven than it is for you not to be humiliated or embarrassed or caught. I want you to go to heaven and not go to hell. So sometimes the Spirit works deep in us to cleanse us. That's why we need to thoroughly repent so we can be healed. Let's worship the Lord again and let's go do the work of God. Lord, I love you. We want to understand your ways, Lord. We want to be the people of faith, the people of the Spirit. Let us walk in this in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray for Brother Green. He has ministered powerfully in the Holy Ghost. And I know he feels to do that again. You can fellowship with one another. The altars are always open. And if you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, we have a baptistry team here waiting to baptize you today.